Hi guys, welcome to my garden. My name is Kristen and today I want to talk to you a little bit about gardening. If you have ever been on the fence about gardening or you're thinking about gardening, sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating and overwhelming because you can see a beautiful garden and say, I can't do that. How can I do that? I know that was my mentality. Um, about nine years ago, I started gardening. I had a real small patch and I, I tried to make a go of it and I just thought, uh-uh, I can't do this, so I stopped. And then three years ago, we bought the property that we're at now and very slowly, we started building. And each year we've built upon last year. So the first year we started out with like three boxes. Last year we decided let's start putting some perennials in. So we put in strawberries, blueberries, fruit trees. It really is never too late to start. I am an amateur gardener. This is only my third year. My garden is, <laughs> it's, it's, it still isn't, isn't finished. It's coming together but it's something that we're proud of. We put a lot of work into it. And I just want to let you know, give you some um, inspiration that it's never too late. I just turned 42 this year and just started gardening. The great thing so, about gardening is you can make, you can make a mistake. It's, it's going to be okay. Mmm, that breeze feels good. It's been really hot here. But you can make a mistake and it's going to be okay. You can correct it. You won't learn unless you do make those mistakes. I have made so many mistakes in my garden. And even again this year, I made a lot of mistakes. I don't know how, but I'm my tomatoes are really suffering from blight. I trim them. I put straw and cardboard down. I did everything you're supposed to do to keep the blight off the tomatoes. I've got blight. I don't know why I've got blight. Let me show you. See that? That's blight. I have covered all of this. All of this is covered. And look at this. I have blight. It's been such a dry summer. We haven't been, um, we haven't had a lot of rain, but it's something I'm gonna build on. But look at this. I still have a ton of tomatoes and it's okay. Um, I didn't trellis things well. I've got tomatoes falling on the ground and I've got cucumber beetles eating my um, cucumbers so bad that I'm losing them. I'm losing my zucchini plants to the vine borers. I didn't plan for when I was going to pull my garlic and my carrots and my potatoes and my onions. I'm going to have all these empty beds, but it's not, it's never too late. So I, I started doing some research, kind of pouring into it. What can I grow? Today is August 1st. The growing season is not over. We still have opportunity to get some things in the ground or in, in the garden beds. So I started doing some research and I found out what, what I can put in the ground. If you're interested in still being able to put some things in, it's not too late. Something that's kind of been, I don't want to get political here. I'm not going to get political on my channel. I'm going to keep it upbeat, but it's something that we need to be mindful of. We're spoiled people. <laughs> we just get in our cars and we drive to the grocery store and we pluck that box of cereal or we pluck the tomato off the shelf and we expect it to always be there. What if, what if one day you couldn't do that? What, what are we going to do? So I saw this on social media. It was a question. And I even asked a friend this question and she kind of stumped her like, oh. <laughs> and it's a serious question. And I am curious to know what your answer would be. The question is, if you could only eat from your backyard tonight, what would you eat? I know what I would eat because, you know, we garden, I can, I put things up. But if you could only eat what you grow, what you put up, what would you be eating tonight? Three years ago, when we moved to this property, before we moved to this property, 
I had a dream of having a, a, a homestead. I had a dream of having animals and a garden, chickens. My goal is to have every kind of perennial tree and fruit that you can possibly have. Now we're in Michigan zone 6B and you know we're not fortunate to be able to grow things year round so we have to put things up. But I want to hear from you in the comments down below what would you eat for, for dinner tonight that you grew yourself in your own backyard? Very curious to know what your answer would be. So this here is my garden. These, I mean, it doesn't look pretty right now. We're, you know, we've been laying down cardboard, trying to suppress the weeds. My chickens have been eating my this tomatoes. tomatoes through so the badly fence. falling over, but guess what? It's going to turn red, and I'm going to eat it. But this is our garden. And I just want to encourage you that it's not too late. You can, I have, I have grown potatoes in 50, uh, five gallon buckets. I have grown potatoes in totes. Is it the best method? No, but did it, did it produce? Yeah, it did. We, we got probably 30 potatoes out of one tote and that gave us a couple meals. And we don't even pay for those potatoes. My neighbor actually, she gave me potatoes that had um, eyes on them. Right here, this is my potato bed. And this right here, it's not doing the best that it can do because it's only in a 12 foot bed. You can't heal it, but we're doing it. This year was a lot of firsts for us. Eggplant, different um, herbs. Right, right back here, these aren't, they don't love the heat. These are sugar snap peas. But even right now, if you're thinking about putting some food in, it is not too late. So let me show you something. Right here was my garlic bed, okay? I had this little itty bitty zucchini plant up front. I transplanted it, it wasn't doing well, so I put it in. And guess what, I put some, some zucchini seeds in here. I also put two cabbage cabbage seeds in here. Is it gonna do anything? I don't know. I hope. Right here, this is my lettuce bed. I've been taking all of this lettuce out of here slowly and feeding it to the chickens. But I'm gonna mend this bed. And I like I said, I started doing some research and I found there are some things that I can grow. So still, if you're in Michigan, now I don't know what zone you're in, it, 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 all, it all varies, but I know for me right now, I can still grow some things. Cress, I'm gonna put some cress in. Mike, he loves cress with egg salad. This grows in like 45 days. find out when your first frost is. I know for us, we still have all of August, all of September, probably halfway into October. So right there, that's a good 75 days. So if you look on the back of a packet, this one says 68 days to harvest, but I know that these are cold loving veg. So I want to put some of these sugar snap peas right over here on this trellis to help fill in where these or actually these are snow peas. I'm gonna put these in where the sugar snap peas are starting to fail. Spinach. Spinach loves cooler weather. Now, right now it's August 1st. I'm not gonna put spinach in yet. I will probably wait and put spinach in near the end of August. Also, a salad bowl mix. I'm going to replant some salad. Bush beans. Right now is a perfect time to plant beans because your soil is beans, really, really they love warm. really, really warm soil. And contrary to belief, um, they actually do not love this heat. We've had, a, we've had a really, really hot summers. My beans are doing horrible. Cilantro, I'm gonna put some more cilantro in because guess what? Salsa days are coming. Dill. Dill, this is, a, this is a really good time to get some dill in. Dill, though it's not a perennial, it sells seeds. 
I've got dill growing all over the place. Let's see. I'm going to try and put more of these in. Cucumbers and zucchini grow really, really, really fast. And I'm hoping that the um, cucumber beetles are going to go away. <laughs> Mike, he asked for this La La Rasa lettuce. This is one of his favorites. Let's see what else. Cauliflower. I'm going to get some cauliflower in. Here's my carrot bed, right? I tested my carrots out the other day. These guys are ready to go. This week I'm going to be pulling them and I'm going to be pressure canning them. I've never pressure canned carrots before. I'm going to learn. I can't be too much different than beans. I've just did beans for the first time. So I'm going to put some carrots in. Carrots, you can leave carrots in the ground like four weeks after the first frost. So I'm going to try two different kind of carrots. If you like beets, put some beets in. Turnips, rutabaga. You can probably even get some potatoes going and have new potatoes. It is not too late. So I'm going to start working on some of these beds and I'm going to get some things in the ground. chicken and she can jump in the garden the other ones won't do quickly, it quickly a quick note on fruit trees <clears throat> you don't have to spend a hundred dollars on a fruit tree okay these fruit trees were $35 we dug a hole twice the size we put some peat in there we put some plant food they did so well we put them in last fall even late in late summer and we actually got a lot of fruit so you don't need to spend a ton of money super super easy and in a couple years you'll have some fruit you do have to watch out for the pollinators the peach one does not need a pollinator but my other ones the pear the cherries the apple definitely need to have some pollinators really great memory so keep an that. that I have um, from my childhood is when I would go and I would visit my cousin I would stay with her and I lived in the city I lived in Ferndale four blocks off eight mile <laughs> I didn't grow up in the farming world my mom she didn't can she was a great baker great cook but i didn't know anything about this homesteading life we didn't have any kind of animals we had a beagle and a cat <laughs> but um i would go and i would stay with my aunt and my uncle and my cousins and i would always just long to be in that environment i love the farming environment they always had a garden um my uncle, I remember he made pickles all the time and I just, they were just really great memories for me. And I just remember being as, I remember as a kid saying, that's what I want. One day, that's what I want. Now they're up on 80 acres. <laughs> I don't have 80 acres, but you don't have to have 80 acres to farm. You can have half an acre, quarter acre. You can have a, a, a small little lot and you can put food in. I know plenty of people that grow food wherever they can. So I just remember garden that. gloves. My hands are always stained. <laughs> okay. Actually not that bad. We just did one bed. So that's it. Cauliflower one's in. Mike, now our compost isn't ready. We've been throwing chicken poop in there. So it's very nitrogen hot. I cannot throw my compost in there. But we don't really have anything on hand. But Mike, he had some ash from the fireplace over the winter. We had some worm castings and some blood mail. We worked it in. We left in some of the roughage from the lettuce. That'll break down. It's better than nothing, and it's what we've got on hand. 
Um, I may throw some eggshells in there. Um, but that's it. So as we start to pull things, we'll start to put more things in. Remember, it is not too late. You can get things in the garden. Um, I mean, we can put things in clear to the end of this month. So right here, my... just think about it. It's not too late. If you're interested in gardening, if you have any questions, remember I am not an expert, but I am somebody I can research and I can learn and grow. I'm not afraid to make mistakes. I'm not afraid to just go for it. Thanks so much for tuning in Whew. and uh, for hanging out with us. And I hope you have a great night. I'll see you next time.